is Lisa from Life in Layouts and today I have a process video using this sketch from HipKit and I will link their Facebook page below so that you can check it out. I love turning these one page sketches into two page layouts. I know you guys uh, recently told me that you wanted to see more of those so I thought I would do that for this process video. I'm also using a six by six paper pad and I do end up using one uh, or actually two pieces of 12 by 12 that's the background pieces as well as that cream color that I'm going to pull out in just a second. So what you saw on the sketch was lots of squares in the background and while I don't follow the sketch exactly I used those squares as a inspiration piece. I pulled out my one and a quarter punch square punch from Stampin' Up! and I pulled out this six by six paper pad to use for these one and a quarter punch. I really like using six by six paper pads for things like this because the scale on the paper is a lot smaller so that when you're cutting out a one by one and a quarter inch square, it you don't really want a really big pattern in the paper. I cut out what I thought I needed and then I pulled out this red paper here. It has a bunch of scripts on the background and it was way too busy. So that's why I pulled out the cream color paper to lay on top of it. So I got the paper because I did want to use the red to mount my photos. And then I just trimmed down the cream color paper. I knew that I was going to put that cream all the way to the center. So I gutted my paper with a bigger um, edge on the outside left and right of the photo uh, of the paper. Then I cut down these two four by six photos uh, to fit inside that cream paper because I wanted them to line up, but I didn't want them to cover up the red pattern paper. I start to lay down the squares and quickly realize I did not have enough squares. So I pulled out two Project Life kits. This first kit that I am looking through is a childhood kit and if you have kids at all I would highly recommend this kit. I picked it up at Tuesday morning and it just has such cute little papers in it and I pulled out those four by six cards as well and it looks like a little composition notebook and I thought that was perfect for this layout. And then I pulled out the Azelle uh, Arzu. I probably totally butcher that edition and this one is one that I'm actually using in the kids uh, school album so I figured I might as well pull in some of those colors there so I cut out a bunch of those cards that I selected and into the one and a quarter inch as well and then I'm going to use this ground espresso to ink all of the edges I ink the outside paper as well as the cream paper and then all of those little squares there. And I transfer those squares back and forth on this cream color paper. I probably could have done something easier, but I wasn't thinking when I did it. And I love the way that it came out. It did. I did do that off camera, figuring out the layout and, and trying to figure out what works best for it because I didn't want any of the colors to be close together. And so once I got that down, I didn't want to mess that up and have to restart over. So that's the, the point of me going back and forth and back and forth with these little squares. I go ahead and put down the squares and I have these two extra squares up to the left there and I really wanted to make them work and I will get them in there in just a second. So when I put these two photos down on the right hand side of the layout, I realized that I may have cut it a little short and I decided that I would rather have a small border at the top and bottom instead of a border in between because I really like that the fact that those two photos butt up against to each other in this layout. So I'm gonna to start to set the squares down and I do end up moving them around so that I could get those two additional squares in there because I really liked those two squares. And so I finally have figured out a configuration in regards to how I want that. And as you can tell in the sketch, I did not uh, follow the sketch as it is. I made it what I 
I took inspiration from the sketch and that's really all you have to do sometimes. You don't have to follow it to a T. Don't feel like you have to, you know, make it look exactly like that. I, I liked parts of it. I liked those squares behind the photos and that's what I took inspiration from. I got this trick from another YouTuber when you're doing things like adding a lot of paper like these little squares instead of adding adhesive directly to the back of the paper go ahead and add adhesive to your layout and then you have and then just lay the paper on top of it it makes it very easy to put all those papers down so my intention was to mount this photo on this red paper which is the background paper and then turn this green paper over, turn the red paper over to the green side and use that to mount it as well. So then it would have a double border. And so I'm going through doing that. And then when I went to lay it down, I laid it down crooked. And I don't realize till right here when I went to cut it, I was like, oh my goodness. And then I tried to peel it off and it started to rip the paper. So I was like, I'm just gonna go with a different aspect. And so what I decided to do was take that scrap piece of paper that I had been cutting out all of those squares with and mount it in different aspects. And I love this technique. I've seen a lot of scrapbookers and YouTubers do this where they just put it on the edge. So I went ahead and left all of this in so that you could see all of the different ways that I do it. And truly it's just finding some paper that I like putting it along the edge, seeing where it fits, and just going with that. So as I'm doing that, let me tell you about these photos. These photos are from Jackson's kindergarten orientation. So he is the first little one to go to school. So this was the first experience for us. And this photo here is him standing outside of his classroom, waiting to go in to meet his teacher for the very first time. And then the two photos on the right hand side that span across the layout is uh, of his dad looking at like all the new school orientation stuff and things that we had to fill out and stuff like that and then his mom is standing uh, right behind um, Adam which the ne the other our other one talking to the teacher so it shows kind of the classroom a little bit and and what we went through when we were there and so this is the end of my matting. And a lot of times I make this more difficult than I really should. I really like the back of that paper. It, the paper that I'm mounting right now has the chalkboard look to it. And the back of it has what looks probably like a dictionary, like a little kid's dictionary. And so I liked all of it and I wanted to keep it, but it just made made it very difficult for me to do and lay it down. So when I get to this point where I feel like I am done, I do like my mats to be even around the edges. So if there's any pieces that are um, missing, like if you can see, if you can really tell, the blue kind of stops right there. So I took this stripe paper and just went to the top of the the yellow paper. So then it looks like I have an even border, even though inside that even border are all different funky shapes and and different layers. When I went to lay it down, I love the way this looks because it brings in all of the colors from all those little tiny squares and it just brings in and highlights the photo of Jackson at school. So I went ahead and used some fun foam just to give it a little bit of dimension between the background and the photo itself, just because there was a lot of layers there and I wanted to make sure that it really stood out from the background. And then I, I did use my notebook punch, which I thought was perfect for this on that yellow paper there. It makes it look like it, I tore it out of a notebook. I went ahead and added the what looks like a composition notebook on the left hand side. And then this is where I'm gonna just trim down this photo. This photo was not at kindergarten orientation, this was actually at Walmart, but we were school shopping. So I thought that it was, it would be nice to have that photo in there as well um, with Jackson picking out his items that he needed for school. I had a strip of the red paper with the green background. And since I didn't get to mount it like I wanted to on the left, I 
went ahead and just added a, a long piece to the right hand side and so that it really brings in that green and there's a lots of different colors and shades of green in here just because of the different pieces that I use from the project life kits and that six by six paper pad so that it, I felt like by adding that green to it it really tied everything together that it wasn't just one color green that I was using and it kind of stood out I have this three by four card that says learn, grow, happy, love, smile, which I thought was perfect. And then I'm actually trying to cover up the backpack in our cart because that backpack, backpack, oh my goodness, that backpack was his brother's backpack. So I didn't want it to, because it, it was actually very prominent in that photo because it's just, it's Ninja Turtles and it, it, so I wanted to cover it up because it wasn't his. And so that was perfect for that little card to cover it up I got these they're actually called die cuts plastic shapes and they're like acetate and I wanted to use those so I moved those around quite a bit and decided that I didn't like the way any of them looked so I pulled out um, some of my embellishments and some of them were some embellishments that I recently picked up that haven't made it to my embellishment books and then others were from my book I will post a link below to my embellishment book if you guys haven't seen that yet already um, that book is not my idea but I love 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 it and my embellish that embellishment video uh, explains all about how to how I set it up and where that idea came from. So I'm going to start using these embellishments to create my cluster at the bottom. The inspiration that I took from this sketch was the squares behind the photo and then the two clusters in the upper left hand side and the upper right hand side of the lay of, of the sketch itself. So I'm starting to build the cluster. I added a blue border down there at the bottom I was able to get that uh, acetate piece in in that teal color and I used my tiny attacher to staple it on and then this little sticker right here says be you because I feel like that's kind of an encouragement for um, starting kindergarten and then that big circle or scallop circle says smile on it just because Jackson's smile is so big and and handsome in that picture I have a little wood veneer star with a little blue rhinestone on it and that is going to complete that cluster for now. I try to make that paper clip work in every cluster and it just did not work. You'll see it again, trust me. Then I have that scallop circle at the top, went ahead and added that to the very edge and then cut it off so it's like almost a, a semicircle. It's a little bit bigger than a half, half of a circle. And then to that cluster, I added this apple in a wood veneer because I figured, you know, apples and, and school always goes together. I wanted to add another piece of that acetate up here to the apple, but this really came down to I didn't have a way to attach it. And because the only way that I really like to put acetate in is through st with staples because I don't like the adhesive to show and I couldn't staple a wood veneer. So I chose a different arrow. It says happy on it, which Jackson was so very happy to be starting school. And I used fun foam on the edge that wasn't on, on the apple so that it laid straight. And then it actually, the fun foam was even smaller than the apple. So I had to add an extra little piece there. And then I add this cork star to that cluster. And that is it for that cluster right there. On the right hand side of the layout then I'm going to start working with a cluster on this learn grow happy love smile card and I don't add a whole lot to this because that card is so big but I added this ABC one two three cork to bring in the cork from the other layout to kind of tie them together and then I have this little tiny circle it's a gray circle and it has a paper airplane on it and there's some paper airplanes in that green uh, paper on the left hand side so I figured that, that would be perfect for to add it and tie it together and then that little sticker that I just added there just said be different because um, you know who wants to be the same you want to teach your children individuality and, and to be different so I thought that was a, a nice little encouragement for him as well I pull out my enamel dots and I decided on this gray sparkly one so I add two to the cluster on the right to actually to to each one of the clusters kind of a big one and then the smallest one so I skipped that middle size enamel dot and then I pulled out these enamel shapes and they are triangles but I turned them on the side to make them look more like arrows and added them to that bottom cluster 
I decided that I wanted my title just to be something very simple as kindergarten orientation. And I liked the title placement of the sketch, but it just wasn't in the cards for this layout because my title kindergarten orientation is a very long title and it just wouldn't fit down there so I did kind of pull out some of the smallest stickers that I have I have these uh, tile stickers and I start to put them down straight but then realize very quickly that it wasn't going to work it was just too long so I figured that I would overlap them and kind of make them little funky shape and a little wonky. Uh, one, to make it fit. And then two, because it's kindergarten, you can get away with things like that. And then I use these yellow puffy stickers from Ellie Studio to spell out the word orientation. And I really like the contrast of that black tile stickers in the kindergarten and then yellow orientation uh, or yellow puffy stickers in the word orientation. The composition notebook itself has the name, the school grade, and the date. So I thought that was perfect to add that detail there in regards to the, the information of this quick kindergarten orientation. I pull out some of my splatters and my inks to decide which color I want. And this box was just something that one of my scrapbooking supplies came in. So I kept it. It's like a pizza box. And I used that to minimize the splatter inks on my table to kind of keep my table clean. So I'm going to add that to both sides of it. And that is it. Here is my final layout and some close ups. If you want to check out all of the details from my layout. If you enjoyed this video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already and you want to see more double page layout inspiration, make sure you hit that subscribe button because that's all you're going to get on my channel. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope that you have a scrappy day.